The member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Speaker. I am very proud to be rising today to speak on Bill 168, the Combating Anti-Semitism Act, and to be co-sponsoring this important legislation with the member from Brantford Bren. If, pa if passed, this bill will ensure that the Government of Ontario is guided by the working definition of anti-Semitism adopted by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance Plenary on May 26, 2016, when interpreting acts and regulations and policies designed to protect Ontarians from discrimination and hate amounting to anti-Semitism. Speaker, as a government and as a society, we have a responsibility to stand firm against hatred, and intolerance in all of its forms. And sadly, one of the most common forms that hatred and intolerance manifests itself is through anti-Semitism. In their most recent annual audit of anti-Semitic incidents for the year 2018, B'nai B'rith recorded more than 2,000 incidents of anti-Semitism across Canada, sadly representing a 16% increase from 2017. The vast majority of the cases were recorded um, as harassment, which is somewhat comforting, but they also noted a number of cases of vandalism and violence. And, Speaker, we've seen it all too often. Here in Toronto, we've all seen synagogues, Jewish day schools or community centres, cemeteries vandalized with hateful graffiti, targeted for no other reason than affiliation with the Jewish faith. And you may recall, Speaker, in November 2018, four Jewish students in my own riding of Eglinton Lawrence were assaulted. While walking home, an incident seemingly motivated by what they were wearing, a kippah. Speaker, Jewish students, Jewish Canadians, broadly, should never fear wearing a kippah or other visual indications of their faith in public and they should never fear participating in or attending at Jewish activities, institutions, events, or organizations. But this past November 2019, again, we saw Jewish students and Jewish student organizations targeted at York University when protests on an event organized by a student group on campus led to both verbal and physical altercations with protesters. And my friend Michael Mostyn of B'nai B'rith said at that time, quote, enraged mobs cannot be allowed to prevent lawful and peaceful gatherings from taking place on campus, unquote. I could not agree more. <clears throat> that same month also saw the University of Toronto Graduate Student Union oppose a proposal to make kosher food more accessible on campus simply because it was put forward by Hillel an on-campus Jewish organization that is known to be pro-Israel. Speaker, while valid criticism of the state of Israel does not constitute anti-Semitism, failure to separate the needs of Jewish students on a university campus in Toronto from valid concer concern or criticism of the Israeli government certainly does. And I think that leads to a good opportunity to look at what exactly this act asks the Government of Ontario to adopt. The International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, or IRA, defines anti-Semitism as, quote, a certain perception of Jews which may be expressed as hatred toward Jews. Rhetorical and physical manifestations of anti-Semitism are directed toward Jewish or non-Jewish individuals and or their property toward Jewish community, institutions, and religious facilities. IRA goes on to provide some guidance as to how to apply the definition, and particularly when it comes to criticisms of the State of Israel. They state that manifestations of anti-Semitism, quote, might include the targeting of the State of Israel, conceived as a Jewish collectivity. However, criticism of Israel, similar to that leveled at any other, other country, cannot be regarded as anti-Semitic. Some of the specific examples they present as examples of anti-Semitism include and I think my colleague went through some of these, calling for aiding or justifying the killing or harming of Jews in the name of a radical ideology or an extremist view of religion, accusing the Jews as a people or Israel as a state of inventing or exaggerating the Holocaust. And there are many other examples. Speaker, I recognize that I'm running out of time, so in concluding my remarks, I want to recognize the hard work and the commitment of our province's Jewish community in advocating for this change, and in particular, the efforts of advocacy organizations, including B'nai B'rith Canada, 
the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs, and the Friends of Simon Wiesenthal Center, and many others in working to combat anti-Semitism. And I also want to thank the member for Brantford Brant for introducing this legislation in December and for the opportunity to add my name and my support to this important bill as a co-sponsor. I encourage all members of this House to join us in standing up for what is right, for tolerance, which we all profess to believe in, and for Ontario's Jewish community by adopting this legislation and the IRA definition of anti-Semitism. Thank you. Further debate?